Hello and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of the testes. This is a bull testicle and it will give us a broad understanding of mammalian male reproductive anatomy in general. We also took a look at the anatomy of the ovary recently, so if you're interested in learning a bit about the mammalian female reproductive system as well, check out the video linked in the description below. So in this video, we'll be talking mainly about the testis, because the specimen I have here is of the testis, but what we refer to as the testicle usually includes the testis, the epididymis, and the vas deferens. While we can't see these other structures in the specimen here, I'll still talk a little more about them later on. So let's talk about the testes. The testes is the meat and potatoes of the male reproductive system. That is to say, it has the crucial function of producing sperm cells. It's homologous to the ovaries in the female reproductive system, which produces egg cells. So the testes differ from the ovaries in several key ways, even if you don't count the obvious sperm versus egg difference. So first and most obviously, the testicles are suspended outside of the abdomen in a sac of skin called the scrotum, while the ovaries are located internally. This is because sperm production is very temperature sensitive and requires a temperature that is around 2 degrees lower than the normal body temperature. By having the testes suspended outside of the abdomen, the testes can be cooled to a lower temperature than the body by air circulating around the scrotum. The descent of the testes happens during development. In early fetal development, the testes are located in the abdomen, just like the ovaries. But around the seventh month of pregnancy, the testes move out of the abdomen and descend into the scrotum. Another difference between the testes and the ovary is that while the ovary contains all the eggs it will ever produce at birth, Sperm production, or spermatogenesis, begins at puberty and continues throughout the organism's lifetime. In fact, the average male will produce about 525 billion sperm cells throughout their lifetime. Spermatogenesis begins at puberty when undifferentiated germ cells, called spermatogonia, divide mitotically and produce two daughter cells. In order to maintain the amount of spermatogonia present in order to sustain spermatogenesis throughout the organism's lifetime, one daughter cell remains a stem cell spermatogonium, while the other differentiates into a primary spermatocyte. The primary spermatocyte then grows and divides meiotically into four spermatids. These four spermatids then transform into sperm cells. After spermatogenesis takes place in the testis here, the sperm enters the epididymis, which should be around here, coiled around past the tip of the testis, and the epididymis is a long, coiled tube that transports sperm from the testes. The epididymis is also the site where sperm mature and gains the ability to swim. After the sperm travels through the epididymis, it enters the vas deferens, a tube lined with smooth muscle. The vas deferens would usually lead out from the epididymis this way. The vas deferens transports the sperm into the ejaculatory duct, and there, the sperm cells are suspended in fluid secreted by the prostate gland and seminal vesicles, creating semen. The semen is ejaculated through the penis, and if one of the sperm cells fertilizes an egg cell, an embryo will form and develop. So now let's take a look at the external anatomy. As I mentioned earlier, this is only the testis, so we won't be able to see the epididymis or vas deferens. So first, let's position the testis. Like I said before, this section would be where the testis leads out into the epididymis, and the epididymis actually curves down and connects to the side here. Here you can see the cross sections of the efferent ductules, so these little holes here. And these are the 12 to 15 small tubes that connect the testis to the epididymis. 
above the epididymis, you would usually see a spermatic cord leading out, which is a structure that contains a number of things, arteries and veins, nerves, muscles, and the vas deferens. So the testis would normally be covered by a tough membrane called the parietal tunica vaginalis, but that is not present in the specimen. This membrane here is actually right below the parietal tunica vaginalis and is called the visceral tunica vaginalis. You can also see blood vessels here. So all of these blue lines would be blood vessels. And under the visceral tunica vaginalis, as you can see in this small cut here, is a layer of fibrous connective tissue. I can try to pick it up. So this tissue, and this is called the tunica albuginea. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So this was actually a cut that was made during handling, so let's just ignore that. And I'm going to cut longitudinally along the midline. So here along the edges, we can see the cross sections of the blood vessels that we saw before. So on this side as well. And now, all of the yellow tissue you see in the middle here is called the testicular parenchyma. Testicular parenchyma contains structures called seminiferous tubules, which are too small to see with the naked eye. So seminiferous tubules are tiny convoluted tubules in which spermatogenesis takes place. They radiate from the surface of the testis towards the region around here, so they would all go this way. So here, the seminiferous tubules form a network of interconnected tubes called the reti testis. The reti testis then leads into the epididymis through the efferent ductules we saw earlier. The seminiferous tubules are lined with a type of cell called Sertoli cells, which are tall columnar cells that nourish and support developing sperm cells. In between the Sertoli cells are the spermatogenic cells, which are germ cells that divide and differentiate to form sperm cells as we discussed earlier. And after the sperm cells are produced in the seminiferous tubules from spermatogenic cells, they travel to the reedy testis here, then into the epididymis. And in between the seminiferous tubules are a type of cell called the lytic cells, which produce the sex steroid hormone testosterone. And now if I zoom in, you can see this lighter band of connective tissue running along the middle. You can also see it in the other half of the testis, right here. And this lighter band is called the mediastinum, a network of fibrous connective tissue. The mediastinum spans the length of the testis and also has branches, or septa, that radiate outwards. So you can see some cross sections of the septa here all these white stripes that kind of interrupt the yellow testicular parenchyma are the branches of the mediastinum. So these septa are actually attached to the tunica albuginea at the surface of the testis here and divide the testis into a series of wedge-shaped lobules. There are usually around 200 to 400 lobules in a testis, 
each lobule containing around 3 to 10 seminiferous tubules. The mediastinum also functions in supporting the reedy testis here and the blood vessels throughout the testis. Aight, that's the end of the testis dissection. Thanks for staying, folks. Here's a fun fact to send you on your way. In testes and also in ovaries, if a germ cell like a spermatogonium develops a tumor, it can form something called a teratoma. Because germ cells have the ability to differentiate into many different types of specialized cells in the body, teratomas can often be found with hair or teeth inside. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more.